here is the outline first i will talk about uh, some of the open geospatial packages that i have built and then i will show you some examples how to, uh, to make accessible through uh, interactive web app and uh, highlight two open source packages that i have built uh, gmap and segment geospatial on the right here shows you some um, animations uh, demonstrating the river dynamics so these are creating using static data with the interactive web app uh, here um, by visiting this link so anyone can visit the web app uh, to create animation for any location uh, around the globe and really make things accessible uh, to uh, the general public whether you have uh, expertise or skills in uh, geospatial uh, or not and so here is the uh, open geospatial uh, solutions uh, organization github organization uh, github organization that i have created and it hosts uh, a lot of uh, python packages and also data cataloged uh, interact with web apps so my um, goal is to make these things accessible to everyone so right now nowadays we have a lot of uh, geospatial data open access geospatial data in the public not even know how to access that and it's like um, uh, distributed uh, in um, different cloud providers so i created this data catalog that uh, basically loops through all the data set available and makes it accessible uh, much more accessible because you can um, retrieve this data set and then pull into your uh, packages and to do all kind of a cloud computing and also geospatial analysis with this after that if you create any data products uh, you can also make it accessible through for example the interactive web app in here and then so um, users don't need to know like uh, have background in geospatial or remote sensing or gs they can just visit uh, the web app that you created and uh, so in that way things are much more accessible so you're welcome to try out this uh, uh, resources. Uh, so in today's uh, presentation, I will highlight uh, one interactive web app and uh, also two uh, packages. So here uh, is the uh, interface of the interactive web app. Uh, you can visit the URL and it's very easy to use. Uh, it allows you to create uh, animations for any location around the globe uh, using uh, open access satellite data. Uh, here is the quick demo. So you can just visit the app and then select a region of interest. <coughs> and then just um, um or upload on our iphone computer then you can select the satellite you want and different bank combinations also uh, uh different parameters then you can just click one button you will be able to create animations uh, for your region of interest then you can download the animation as a, a gif or a mp4 so it's very easy to use like i said um, and under the hood is using cloud computing and uh, open access data so next i'm going to quickly show you some examples uh, that are very striking so can, anyone can use the web app to uh, create animations to showcase the changes uh, on the earth surface uh, for example the drawing of roc uh, mining in canada uh, urban expansion in dubai the river dynamics in uh, south america uh, deforestation landslide uh, urban growth uh, this is in las vegas in china in uh, mexico <coughs> and coastal erosion um, and any location that you're interested in right so we can have low resolution we have high resolution uh, data and you can also use uh, other weather and climate data so this one is uh, temperature data dynamic uh, temperature dynamics uh, within 24 hours uh, you can also do service uh, sea surface temperature uh, vegetation dynamics um, volcanic eruptions and also wildfire uh, monitoring so there are a variety of the satellite data with uh, uh, different spatial and temporal resolutions. So anyone can use the web app to create animations. Uh, it used to be very difficult, uh, but now with uh, cloud computing and open uh, geospatial data, we can make this data more accessible to the public. Uh, so you can use it to do environmental monitoring, uh, urban, plan uh, urban planning, um, or even just do simple training and interest to showcase this to the public that uh, this is what is happening and how can we um, take actions to re, uh, mitigate uh, the impact of um, uh, weather and climate uh, events and so under the hood um, this web app is powered by uh, open geospatial um, packages uh, including gmap and uh, google sending so gmap is an open source package that I created uh, uh, about four years ago and uh, so right now it has a lot of uh, 
resource that allows you to explore and visualize geospatial data. The source code is open, uh, uh, open source on GitHub, so you're welcome to uh, visit uh, the GitHub repo. And also, uh, we have a documentation website, gmap.org, that uh, hosted a lot of tutorials, uh, API references, and uh, you can check that out um, to learn more about uh, the package. And uh, since it's launched in uh, 2020, it has been used by people all over the world. And we have uh, have over 140 release now and a lot of downloads. And I have um, organized a lot of workshops and also a uh, lot of uh, tutorials and notebooks uh, in the past. I was lucky to receive some funding from NASA to uh, support uh, the development and um, maintain uh, the GMAP uh, package. I also wrote a book uh, trying to so okay how how people can use these uh, cloud computing resources to do um, big geospatial data analysis and the book is public accessible uh, through the link here uh, anyone can trade it out and just open a notebook and they can just run it and then do some data visualization and also analysis i also created a youtube channel that uh, posted a lot of tutorials about how to utilize these open source packages uh, do cloud computing uh, data visualization so anytime if i develop something i want people to use it and I want to create videos and tutorials showing people how to do it. Also create notebooks that make things uh, reproducible. So I think this is very important. I mean, in geospatial is that if you want other people to use your uh, data product, your algorithm, uh, you not only making um, the algorithm access uh, open source, you might also want to, for example, uh, create some web apps or uh, provide some sample data set that at least people can reproduce and makes it easy for people to use uh, without having to um, spend a lot of time trying to uh, install packages on their own uh, computer. And uh, next, I want to quickly show you some uh, key features, like some of the things you can do with uh, GMAP. Um, so GMAP has been officially adopted by Google. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you can find it on their Google Sending uh, official documentation uh, using GMAP. And here are just some key features. I don't have time to go into the details, but you can, for example, easily change the base map to um, any uh, freely available base map uh, on the internet. Uh, you can also do, for example, some um, simple layer visualization, kind of a very similar to the desktop GIS. So the bar is much, much lower compared to you have to write many lines of code to do the same thing uh, in here. So you can, for example, turn layer on and off just using the browser. And this data all in the cloud. So you can pull the data uh, on the fly and then you can do uh, visualization interactively. And all the example that I'm showing here, there's a notebook in here. So you can just click the notebook and then you can visualize that. You can run it with your own account. Uh, so anyone can try it out uh, as long as you have a, a Gmail account. And um, you can also, for example, change layer visualization interactively. So if you need uh, to visualize any data, uh, satellite data, uh, multi-band, or single band data, you can just do a simple uh, selection. Then you will be able to visualize these things uh, on the fly. So it makes things really easy and accessible because you don't have to download large amount of data. So all the data are being um, visualized and retrieved on the fly. You can also do inspector, right? So if you're doing remote sensing geospatial, you might want to uh, sometimes inspect the pixel values. So Gmail also has all kinds of tools that allow you to uh, to do that. Uh, either it's vector data, raster data, uh, you can do that easily. And you can also use some uh, intact tools, for example, the drawing tools to uh, simply uh, clip the data if you want. Uh, if you just focus on a small area, you can just do a simple clipping. Again, everything is happening in the cloud and anyone can uh, try it out easily. So that's uh, about the uh, GMAP. Um, and the other package I want to highlight is called Segment Geospatial. So um, again, it's uh, the source code is uh, available on GitHub and it's built on top of the segment and it's model. So this was just released uh, last uh, April, so it's about a year ago and it has become so much uh, so popular uh, in a variety of uh, disciplines, uh, including geospatial. So I built on top of the segment and model to um, provide uh, functionality that allow users to uh, segment geospatial data, set data, high resolution imagery very, very easily. And next, I'm going to quickly show you some um, demos, right? So if you give it uh, a satellite imagery, you will be able to do the segmentation. So this is called automatic uh, segmentation that you don't need to do additional training. It will just segment the imagery and then give it the result. Um, it will provide three outputs. So you can pick up, you can select the one that's uh, most suitable 
uh, for your application without to do any additional training. So this is a foundation model that's um, a groundbreaking because in the past doing remote sensing, we have to collect the training samples on the images. We have to go out and then find ways to get the data and then get the label and then do segmentation. But now we can just give any images, uh, you will be able to segment and then give it the result. So for example, you can extract buildings. So these are the greenhouses. Uh, you can just one click and then uh, with couple lines code, you can do the segmentation. Uh, if you're working on agriculture, sometimes you might want to extract the field boundary. You can also do it uh, very, very easily. Um, besides doing automatic segmentation, you can also use uh, points as basically the input prompts. So in this case, I want to extract the buildings. I just uh, place a couple markers on the buildings. Then you'll be able to extract the buildings. If there's some feature that you don't want, uh, you can place some background points and then you will be able to remove those backgrounds. So you can see here, it's very easy. Uh, anyone can try it out uh, without uh, having uh, to know a lot of uh, uh, codings. You can also do bounding boxes. So you can just draw a bounding box. The model will be able to segment the object uh, within the bounding boxes. Uh, you can create bounding boxes interactively, or you can also use the bounding boxes that um, you get from other deep learning models. And then you will be able to segment the images all at once. So think about this. Um, in the past, if you have to uh, do manual delineation or you have to train the model it's going to take you a while so not everyone knows how to do that but now with these uh, uh, packages it's much more accessible now because anyone can just open a notebook and then just run through that uh, easily without having to know a lot about uh, coding uh, last one is about text prompt so besides using like uh, uh, input prompt or bounding boxes you can also just simply like i want the buildings i want the trees just a simple uh, enter your the text prompt and um, you can adjust the parameters so it's not going to be perfect because the segment energy model is not trained on geospatial data it's trained on all kind of a, a photograph uh, pictures and images uh, but it performs very decently uh, on geospatial data as you can see from here so i can use it to segment trees buildings or any type of objects that we want and um, you can do some adjustment so for example i can also do uh, extraction of uh, swimming pool. So the type swimming pool, you'll be able to extract the swimming uh, pool. Then you can save the result um, as a geospatial data. So basically, you input the geospatial data, the output will also be geospatial data, geo reference. So you can save the raster data, you can also save the result as vector data. Uh, very easy to use and it's interactive. So you can adjust the parameters to get the uh, best result and then you can save the result. You can also do base segmentation. So if you're working on a large area, uh, you have a small GPU, you can use the base segmentation to subdivide the images into smaller tiles, and then you can um, merge the result automatically back together as a large uh, image. And the last one I'm showing here is like, uh, we can use this to do, for example, building extraction. So if you have any disaster, uh, you want to monitor or to uh, see the damage um, before and after the event. So we can quickly use this kind of model to uh, extract the buildings before the event and also after, after the event. Uh, this traditionally uh, is very time consuming because uh, you have to train the model specifically for the area and you also need to have the um, training data, you also need to have the images um, and you also need to have a lot of computing power. But now with this, you can just need a simple notebook and then you can just pass in the data and then you can run the segmentation. So uh, these are some of the things I want to show you. Uh, there are a lot more uh, uh, resources available on my GitHub, so you're welcome to try it out. And my goal is to make these uh, freely available cloud computing resources <clears throat> with these open source packages and so that uh, anyone can access it. And this will make it more, um, all the geospatial data more accessible to the public. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we can work together to um, make a better future. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you're welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions.